Hi everyone, it's time for another Old Plus New video. Use the hashtag on the screen to tag us in any of your projects or to find any of the other creators. This month we are creating with the prompt festive fun or try a new size. As you can see, I went with festive fun. I'm going to start with the Greetery Rolling Hills stencil. This is a six piece stencil. I'm choosing the widest of the hillsides to make sure that I align those first on my A2 size cardstock. So I do have that white piece of cardstock. I just wanted to show you the quick directions for this stencil. This is my easy peasy way of aligning all of the stencils. There are etch lines around the edges. I am going to add a piece of tape to the back of this cardstock. I'll align it with the etched lines that are provided in the stencil. And then I will put everything in the corner, the right hand corner. And this allows for perfect alignment every single time that I go to add a new stencil. Because the theme was festive fun, it made me think of Christmas and so I decided to create a Christmas card as you can see I really love this Rolling Hills from the greetery. I saw it. It was part of the I believe it was the September release which was their fall release and when I saw it I immediately thought of a winter's night and I went with the blue tones for that reason I thought that the blue would be perfect to illustrate the chilliness in the air I'm starting with distress oxide in salty ocean you can see I just add that next stencil into that lower right hand corner and move on with my next color which is stormy sky once I finish with this I'm going to add my third hillside and then I'll add my speckled egg that salty ocean once I add that speckled egg is going to seem a little bit bright and it doesn't fit the composition of a nighttime scene but I'm going to remedy that by adding another color over the top of it which is going to allow it to still have that beautiful um, salty ocean blue but it just tones it down a little bit because I will use that stormy sky again and that has a little bit of gray in it and you're going to see that it it really works beautifully over the top of this to really mesh those three colors together. I am going to be using some patina colors so I wanted to add some greens and some blues. I thought that it lent itself well to the scene but for the next three layers I am going to go tone on tone. So I'm coming back with the stormy sky over the area that I stenciled stormy sky. I'll add the speckled egg over the speckled egg area and then I will add, I think I add the stormy sky over the salty ocean as well. Um, let's take a look and see what I did. I think that's what I ended up doing was just adding that stormy sky again and, and that is what I did. So for the speckled egg, I did wanna mention that it did dry back quite a bit. So once the ink dried, the lines in the speckled egg don't, they're not as noticeable or prominent as the other lines. I could have realigned my stencil again, but I chose not to. So I thought I was going to just do the stenciling, but once I did the stenciling, I really wanted to use the die. And the die is meant to be used first and then you do the stenciling. So I have a little bit of misalignment at the bottom. I wasn't mad about that. I still think that it works. The uh, other two hills aligned beautifully, so I just went ahead and went with it. I wanted to create the night sky as I mentioned so I started with my new favorite combination. I started with the Uncharted Mariner, added the Distress ink in Black Soot and then I go over it again with the Uncharted Mariner Distress Oxide again. I love this Uncharted Mariner for night skies. You're gonna see as I clap over the top of this with my water, look at that. It, the oxidation on this is so prominent and it really looks like 
a snowy sky. If you've ever lived in an area that has lots of snow, you know when a blizzard comes or you have a heavy snowstorm, you kind of get that Star Wars effect when you're driving especially. And I think that it just really does that beautifully when you add the water to the Uncharted Mariner. For the uh, bottom hill, I wanted it to be a little bit shorter because I did want more of that sky to show. So I did cut it apart from the other pieces and then I trimmed it down once I got it in the place that I wanted it. And then I added the other pieces over the top. This is an accessory die for this uh, rolling hillside. It's called Countryside, and I'm running that through my die cutting machine. I'm going to add some color to this windmill, which I really love this addition to the Countryside houses. I started with salvage patina for that house right there. I added peacock feathers. This is pine needles, so as I mentioned before, I'm going with blues and teals and greens on this card today. So for the windmill blades, I've brought in some weathered wood. I thought the gray went really well with the blue and the green tones. I'm also going to add it to a couple of the rooftops. This video is a little bit longer because it was a little bit more um, time intensive as I was creating it. I had to speed it up quite a bit, so I hope it's easy to follow along. But in order to get all of the footage in, I there was little that I really wanted to cut out. I thought that it was all fairly important, so I left a lot of it in. Here is the black soot that I added. I wanted to add that to a couple of the rooftops. I'm going to use the salvage patina again, and then I'm going to layer that on top of one of the houses. So there are layering pieces for the houses that will allow you to add a two-tone look. And then of course, there are the rooftops which made it easy to add the color to the houses because you didn't really have to worry about whether or not you were getting anything on that roof. Once I glue all of these pieces together, I am going to work on a background. There is a stencil from the greetery. I think it's called tartan plaid that I'm going to use to create my background once I get all of these assembled. I did want to thank you for taking the time if you've been supporting the old plus new this past year. We do have two more videos that will be coming out, one in November, and then we'll have a celebratory final video that will come out in December. So I want to thank those of you that have been supporting the old plus new. I hope you're playing along using the hashtag in your projects, following the prompts. I'm so sorry that I'm so late this month. I have had a very busy month. The next month is going to be a little bit busy as well, so I'm trying to get ahead on some of my design team projects. These are a couple of trees that came in another greetery stamp set. It was called Destination Waterfront Map, and I thought that they went really well with the scene since the trees were bare. This is that tartan stencil. Again, I'm lining it up the exact same way, so there are etched lines on this. I taped it to the back, and then I've aligned my stencil in the lower right-hand corner. I am using the same uh, inks that I used for my houses and for my rolling hills, so I started with the evergreen bow, and I added my second stencil, adding the pine needles. I'm going to add the center to those tartan pieces right here. And for that, I'm going to use the salvaged patina. And then once I get this down, I'll add my next stencil. There's uh, two more colors that I'm going to be adding. I'll add a little bit of the speckled egg and then I'll finally add weathered wood or vice versa. Now for the, these next stencils, I really should have added a little bit of the 
oh, what is that, Pixie Spray. I should have added some Pixie Spray because it is a very fine stencil. So I tried to go up and down with the lines, which is typically my go-to, but I was still, um, I didn't, I mean, it all aligned well, but it was just a little bit more difficult to keep things in place. And if I would have used the Pixie Dust, I think it would have been a lot easier on me. But I really love this stencil. I think that it's a great staple to have especially when you're creating scenes where you want custom colors. I love plaids. I think that plaids work all throughout the year. You can use spring colors with this. You can use very vi vibrant summer colors. So this is a perfect stencil to have in your stash if you don't already have a plaid stencil. I think this one is just wonderful. So there's a look at that plaid and we are going to move along and start trimming things down and building our scene. I wanted this to be, I think I cut it down to three and three quarter by five inches and I'm going to add some white gouache to the background, making sure that I'm really heavy handed with this. I wanted to be a little bit more controlled with the houses, so I did decide not to glue my houses down until after I had added the white gouache. And then I wanted to add some pine trees to this, and there is another coordinating die. It is called the tree details which creates these evergreen trees and so I used my pine needles to color a piece of white cardstock and then I used that die to cut out these little evergreen trees or pine trees. I'm going to use I believe three of them. It cuts out several different, uh, some long, some small, some larger because the larger trees would be would appear taller. I put them in the front and then the smaller trees were going along the back of the hillside. This one could have been used in multiple places, but for some reason, it just, to me, it just wasn't pleasing to the eye to add that second row of the smaller evergreen trees. So I did decide to leave that out. And as I'm gluing these down, I have a, an idea of where I want the placement of my houses. And I kind of changed it up in my mind. So I laid them out. I didn't show it, but I did have them laid out. I ended up putting the larger two-story house towards the front, again, for that perspective, because the larger house would appear larger. I moved it more towards the front, and then I moved some of the smaller houses onto the back. I did color up a piece of cardstock to add to the back of each of the die cuts so that it appeared that there were lights on in each of the homes. If you didn't want lights on and you wanted it to be midnight or something like that, you could add black cardstock to the back. If you don't add anything, uh, then you're going to have the background show. So I made sure to use some mustard seed and added those lights. These are some hillside or not hillsides, sorry. These are some fences that come in the countryside die. So I added them to my house and then I'm using a sentiment that comes from the Mary Spriggs stamp set. Again, this is from the Greetery. It's an older set. I'm going to stamp it twice actually uh, with VersaFine onyx black ink and then I'm going to add some clear embossing powder over the top of that because I do have that dark uncharted mariner and the distress ink in black I wanted to make sure that it stood out and so by adding that clear embossing powder over the top it really helps that stand out from the background I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of my scene. I already added my plaid. I had to think about that. My plaid background to an A2 top folding card base. And I apologize, but the footage for the first part where I added the snow it was out of focus. I don't know what happened, but it was out of focus. So I had some other areas where I still needed to add some snow and I wanted to straighten out some of the 
uh, hillside areas where the paint had spread a little bit further than where I wanted it to. So I'm adding it here so that you can see just how I added that snow again with that white gouache to my background and that will complete my card for today. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please make sure that you give it a big thumbs up like and subscribe and until next time i hope you have a fabulous day